Welcome back to NC State to Andrology. I'm coming to you again from Carteret County on the Elliott Coos Trail, kind of on the back side. So I'm on the sound side of Elliott Coos Trail to talk about uh, this small tree here. Um, sometimes thought of as a shrub, but this one has definitely got its tree shape, just a single stem coming out of the ground. This is our swamp red bay or Persea palustris. Um, there are actually two species of Persea that we would expect to see in the coastal counties in North Carolina, Persea palustris and Persea bovonia. And this is Persea palustris, and I know that it is because the leaves on the back sides are fuzzy, um, and they're actually quite, they're a little bit lighter and quite fuzzy on the back side. So um, this is a bay species, um, one of the components of, so it's here in the maritime forest, but it's also a common bay species in our bay forests, um, along with sweet bay and also loblolly bay. So a species that's found in those kinds of environments and also here in the maritime forest. The species is a, um, it has large evergreen leaves. So these are quite thick and leathery and they are pretty long and narrowly elliptical in shape. So they're widest here at the middle and then tapered to points on the base. Often I find this species easy to identify because it has these little galls which end up sort of bending and um, there's not too many leaves that are on this particular one that are a little bit warped, but, um, but there are definitely some warped leaves and these galls are really common. And like I said, Persea prolustris has got fuzzy um, undersides of the leaves. So those are really easy to, um, those are easy to feel. And if you crush the leaf, this is the same type of bay, the same um, genus that is used for cooking. Although the fuzzy ones are not so much used in cooking because the little hairs come off and get into the food. So probably better to look for the other species of bay. But if you smell it, it's got that really classic bay smell um, that you use in cooking, certainly in um, bay seasoning for shrimp and soups and stews. And you might have noticed this one has got a couple of, whoops, dead leaves on it and this is a little branchlet that I've broken off from another um, another tree and just talking about this scent so these being aromatic um, this is in the family Lauraceae or the laurel family which I also call the stinky leaf family because the leaves are all aromatic um, and so something I want to talk about just quickly is the kind of insects that affect bay um, and also other species so there's a native insect and this one actually shows the galls on the leaves and how they kind of deform the leaves and make them bend in strange ways. So the black twig borer is a native insect found at the coast and it causes like a lot of red bays you'll see these little branches that have um, dead leaves and if you look carefully you can sometimes see the exit hole for these little um, black insects that that go in and um, and do their thing and set up their little chambers inside of the twigs. And it's a native insect, and so one that's common, it's not specific to red bay, although it seems that red bay seems to be one of its um, favorite species, or this one, swamp bay. And, um, but this is one major pathway for laurel wilt disease, which has now been identified in Carteret County. Um, it's slowly influxing, it came in, so this disease uses the vector for a black twig borer is the entrance way that allows the disease to get in. Um, and I wish my colleague, Dr. Robert Jatan, was here to explain that in better detail um, and more, more accurate detail. But um, when you see small branches of this, it's not where laurel wilt disease, it's this black twig borer. And once it has laurel wilt, the entire tree just sort of keels over. So if you see the entire tree that's um, got brown leaves, that's an indicator that you've got laurel wilt disease. And we identified it in our class last year um, first time in the Hoffman Forest, also first time in the Croatan National Forest. So this um, laurel wilt disease affects all species in the laurel family or the Lauraceae, so that includes Persea, um, but also includes Sassafras and also um, Lindera or Spicebush. So certainly a grave concern as this species continues to um, infiltrate coastal forests and slightly inland um, from where it's, it originated in South Carolina. So um, again, this is Persea palustris, right? Swamp red bay, known because it's got fuzzy leaf backs instead of smooth. 
Um, these shiny evergreen leaves are an easy way to know it. They're fairly large, um, usually pointed at the tip, but often kind of wonky if it's got some of these insect galls on it. And um, super aromatic, um, great evergreen, small tree or large shrub. And this is NC State Dendrology.